All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, web workers, or just workers as they're called now. Um, and these little guys live in your browser, and they want to come out and help you. Uh, don't make them just stand around. Uh, they are essentially just a background process that gets uh, spun up onto a separate thread. Um, and they can uh, perform calculations and that kind of stuff in the browser. They have no access to the real DOM, uh, but uh, they do have access to a lot of other uh, parts of JavaScript, like um, the strongly typed arrays and the blob URLs and uh, um, all the and XHR and all that kind of stuff. Um, IndexedDB, if your browser uh, implements it, uh, local storage, that kind of stuff. They have a, a really simple API. Um, basically, you can new it up with a URL to a, uh, a worker script. Um, and basically, that's any JavaScript. It doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't actually have to do anything to be a valid worker. It just can't um, try and uh, do stuff to a DOM element. Um, and it has to be a valid URL, and it has to follow the same origin policy, which is irrespective of if the um, where that script is being um, hosted uh, implements cores or not, because when you knew it, it doesn't care about cores. When you import scripts into a worker, um, it cares about cores. And so that was something interesting I found out. <clears throat> Even if your browsers, are, I mean, uh, your server's responding with cores headers and you're requesting and stuff like that. Uh, the browser doesn't, doesn't care. Um, and then it's got a simple, you just post message. Most of the message can be pretty much anything except for it's not like not native DOM elements or uh, things like the canvas. Um, and then uh, in most browsers, you can do transfers and those can be uh, blobs or strongly typed arrays. <clears throat> Um, those are the only things they'll transfer over. Uh, and then you can close the worker by terminating it. You can add, uh, listen for the message and listen for error. And that's pretty much it. But it's not quite so easy. There are... Welcome to back in the battle days of browser wars and stuff like that. If you liked that incompatibility and always having to wonder is if... Uh, and uh, provide all kinds of checks for um, degrading gracefully and stuff like that. Do stuff with workers and some of the other uh, HTML5 APIs. Um, and a lot of this stuff is not all that well documented. Like, you, you can find kind of this compatibility table, but um, you know, think about that it has to be on the real same origin and some of the other stuff that um, I found is not really uh, well documented. Um, and you can see, as you expect, kind of Internet Explorer. It's got a lot of nodes there. Um, I don't have it on here, but um, Android, like the native Android browser, not uh, Android Chrome, um, which can be different depending on what kind of phone manufacturer you've got, uh, that would all be nodes on that. Um, so before, like Android 4.0, uh, or not using the not using uh, Chrome on Android, you uh, didn't have any worker support either. Um, and then we've got good old IE here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a really cool way to just dynamically create workers from um, uh, stuff is to use the blob URI. So you um, have some kind of some string of code, you load it into a blob, and then get the URL for that blob. And then you create your worker with that. Um, so it's something you just totally created dynamically, or you load it from a different source uh, somewhere that's outside of the same origin policy, but then we're able to get that text and then put it in there. So that's great, wonderful to use. It's so awesome. Not happening on IE. Transferable objects. Um, so I saw that was op the optional argument from the post message. You should be able to put in blobs or typed arrays and have them work. Um, IE 10 and 11 claim that they have the second argument, 
But that second argument is not actually transferable objects, but message ports. Um, and so, and what's really interesting is that, so there's an open issue on this, and I's response was basically, we can reproduce the, reproduce the issue, issue and find it interesting, but we were unable to fix it in IE 11 because it doesn't have a high impact on live production websites. So, and we're already talking about something that's kind of not exactly bleeding edge, not quite like WebGL or something like that, but it's um, at least kind of on the edge, and then no one's using it. It doesn't have an impact on IE because, or on websites because people can't use it. And IE is like, well, because people aren't using it, we don't care. So their response to the um, uh, W3C commit, uh, subcommittee, people that uh, they had submitted tests to, was uh, we find it interesting that uh, you claim our tests fail. Um, IE 12, could it be better? It, it actually, it does do all those things. It uh, will use blob URIs and transferables, and it's got about a 33% better um, rate on transferring objects back and forth and stuff. Um, but if you're forced to use IE, you're probably not going to even be as high as IE 10, and so it could be years before those people that are forced to use IE are up to IE 12 and, uh, and stuff. All right, so I did um, a test on uh, passing message data back and forth um, and looking at how efficient it was in the different data types. Um, and so uh, basically, like your primitives, like your floats and your strings and your arrays, um, those transfer pretty quickly. This is, oh, this got cut off, but... Um, I mean, this is 50 milliseconds to, trans to do a round trip transfer a thousand times, all the way up to, um, I believe that's 400 up there at the top. Um, and I don't have IE 10 in here because its numbers were so huge, like it just, everything was like above 500. <laughs> it was ridiculous and, and it made the graph essentially unused, unreadable. Um, anyway, when you get a nested object, so that's going to be really slow, depending on what all you have in there, especially if they're heavily nested and have other big objects in them and stuff like that. Um, and then um, array buffer and the uh, int array, eight array are pretty similar, but then when you get into um, the n32 and the 64 float and stuff like that, those can be uh, actually be really slow compared to the other stuff. Um, and then there at the average... Um, those last three are the average uh, for all the data types um, for the different browsers, and then the uh, large data types, so like um, your array buffer, your blob, and stuff like that, and then uh, the primitives. What was really interesting is see how low the blob is. Now, you have to, um, you can transfer blobs, um, or pass blobs back and forth in uh, IE and the other browsers without a problem. Um, you can't read directly from a blob, like you can't just like, once it's a blob, then it's a blob, and you have to use a file reader to read from it. Um, so there's got some cost there on the worker side to uh, read this stuff, but it could be a really efficient way, because this blob here that I was transferring was actually a uh, big float64 array um, that uh, was even slower than the int32 array, um, and it was transferring very, very quickly. Um, and the reason for that is pretty much it's essentially already a pointer to memory um, so it's just passing the pointer back and forth um, oh. let's see um, and then if you want to look at kind of the overall efficiency of the different browsers um, Chrome and Safari on my Mac uh, were, were really good, uh, Firefox has a weird thing with array buffer it like um, it was slow, even when using transferable objects. It barely uh, made a difference uh, there. Um, so I was surprised about that. Um, oh, I keep the wrong button. Okay, and then, um, then I took it and looked at the different browsers. And um, so float was always one, essentially here. Yeah, this is getting cut off. Um, but anyway, this, this first bar in all of them is, is how... It was the time it took, or how uh, many operations per second you could do for with passing floats, and then 
you can see the ratio of other things. So, um, like I said, on, on Firefox, the array buffer is like 12 times uh, less efficient than some of your primitives or a blob. Uh, or like you know, twice, a, a three times less efficient than passing a blog. Uh, and you see that same kind of pattern on uh, Internet Explorer as well. Um, so over these, you know, uh, like Safari, it looks like it takes a big difference, but it's just because it's a... If, you, if we go back to here, you see that it's pretty fast. Those are just a large difference in between a float and uh, some other stuff here past floats extremely uh, fast. Um, it took like 20 milliseconds to do a thousand uh, operations. All right. Um, so I also looked at the memory use. And um, so in Internet Explorer and Firefox, you can essentially, you can new up a thousand, five thousand uh, workers. It won't crash the browser, but you'll, you, you'll see the memory use for the browser go way up. Your fan will kick on and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it takes about an extra 1,000K or 250K uh, per worker for those browsers. Um, if we look at Chrome and Safari. They actually, um, they're using this uh, already pre-allocated heap memory space, which the browser can, when it needs to, uh, ask for and allocate some more. But um, if you're, uh, you can easily outrun that memory and then the browser will crash. Um, but at the same time, you probably don't need to be <laughs> newing up a thousand workers or something like that. Um, I think, so yeah, I don't have it in there, but the limit I came to on uh, Chrome and Safari using um, just relatively simple stuff was uh, about 500 to 250 um, workers. But uh, again, you don't really need that because uh, you get your maximum performance when the number of workers equals the number of processing cores. Um, you can uh, do different tests, and you see that once you get above the number of cores you have on your machine or your phone or whatever, um, each new worker you do actually makes things run longer. Um, so you don't um, you don't need to do you know a hundred uh, to a thousand workers. That's not um, useful. Okay, so they're great when you've got parallelized tests, uh, a task, um, and you can split them up between the workers, uh, especially if they're computationally intensive. Um, they're great for reading and writing binary data. Uh, there's a lot of good things to use workers for. Um, now, one thing I found that um, I saw a lot of uh, different examples and libraries doing was that they would um, send the worker something to do and then terminate it and then create a new worker, send it one task, terminate it kind of thing. And um, I had a really, really hard time actually measuring the exact, getting like a good instrumentation on this um, because every time I would uh, open up developer tools and try and run these different tests to see just what exactly the difference was between reusing the worker and... Um, destroying and creating new ones. Um, it just, observing it ma uh, made the measurements go completely haywire um, and frequently ended up in crashing my browser. So um, I don't have a good hard data on that, but just from anecdotal stuff that I've seen, I think it's more efficient to reuse the workers if you can. Um, so what are they not so good at? Uh, one thing that I tried to do earlier was to use them kind of as a XHR proxy. So I would like <coughs> send it a bunch of URLs that I wanted it to get data from, and uh, then it goes and gets the data, and then sends it back to the main thread when it's collected all the data we need. Um, and you could have this, you know, prefetching tiles or um, vector um, sets or something like that. Um, there's some use for that. Uh, it turns out that when you send the a, a URL and then ask the worker to get the resource, um, it doesn't get to use the same browser cache and doesn't get to participate in that in the same way that when you request it on the main thread. So, um, and even if it does, you're still, um, rather than using the cache data in the memory, using the cache data in the memory over on the worker and then still having to post that message back to the main thread. 
So it's uh, not as efficient of a process as you would think it might be. Um, and XHR is already asynchronous, so if you're able to do it through XHR, just do it in the main thread, um, unless you have a really good reason to not do it that way. Um, saw some different examples of people trying to like recreate the DOM um, because you don't have the DOM over in the browser, over in the worker, and uh, it just it's a whole lot of work for something that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If you really need to do that, maybe you should try to do some cross document messaging. Um, have a hidden window where you build up a DOM and then send a DOM element structure and then send it back to the main element I and mean, the main window or something like that. So, uh, and then the main thing that um, people have been working on solving, uh, or that there's libraries that solve uh, for you, and uh, is this message ordering and queuing. So, you send the worker a message if it's something like uh, you know, calculating a Fibonacci sequence or something, which is a really really frequent um, example that you see, well, no big deal, because that's just going to run, and then when it finishes, it's going to send you the message back. So you've got a, a serial thing. It's synchronous. Um, even though your messages you're passing and getting back are asynchronous, you know that the stuff you get isn't going to be in order. Um, however, if you do anything that's asynchronous and you don't know exactly what order it is, you can ask the worker to calculate something and get back, um, you know, one thing immediately and another thing takes you a while and you don't know what those messages are unless you follow some kind of convention. Um, so there's some stuff that's helping that. Um, and I've, I've listed them here. Oops, what have I done? Oh. Okay, so there's um, Worker.js, which just basically adds a, a callback um, thing, and you need to pass it. Um, you need to pass every message uh, an ID, and the uh, an ID with every message, and the worker needs to respond with that same ID. And I implemented a similar um, system in the uh, worker support that we have in the Art.js JavaScript um, library. Um, and Calvin Metcalf uh, did a Catalyne, which was called Communist. Um, and that's got some cool stuff. And then kind of this uh, other thing. Um, and then there, again, Catalyne, Operative and Parallel, they can help you um, kind of marshal up the workers and uh, manage them. Um, and then if you want to have a, like Browserify <clears throat> or require JS, there's some uh, things for that. And then... Uh, if you want to see it, I've got um, some examples from Calvin, and um, someone made a uh, password cracker, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, uh, GL, uh JS is using workers and different stuff, and uh, people have made uh, things where you can make animated GIFs um, by uh, put, it pastes it all together in the worker and stuff. What, what are you guys using for the uh, Esri JavaScript API? Um, what scenarios are... So we've, uh, we're using it um, like kind of directly like built into the platform is uh, some spatial indexing, um, which we're replacing our tree with our bush um, because we liked it so much better, and that's also what we're using in uh, Esri Leaflet. Um, and then also just providing a, a framework for people to do uh, worker tasks and stuff, so it's got a way to... Um, Using kind of uh, AMD style stuff already, using the required JS that um, the, Ez the, the Esri JavaScript API library is already using uh, to be able to um, require stuff in for a worker and have it be created from that, and then uh, have it import scripts and uh, um, set up um, call like processing callbacks and stuff like that. Right on. Uh, which is, I mean, it's, it's really similar ideas to the uh, stuff that. Um, they're doing it in some of the, these libraries. Um, just a, li a little bit different approach, but similar idea. Right. Is that it? That's it for me. All right. <laughs>
not much of a question, uh, it's a small addition. So uh, a big reason to load data in WordPress on the main thread is that when you do a request in the main thread, it blocks the page completely. So if you want to, for example, load uh, one million of points uh, on, a, on a page, you, without worker, it will just freeze the page for a long time. Right, I saw, I saw your um, example of that as well. Yeah, um, it's uh, like Mavos Geo.js because that's a lot and does a lot of work in the worker. And uh, it, it loads the data, it converts it into like a, a, a read buffers that are served to GL where it uh, converts everything to find those, it does uh, label positioning with lots and lots of work, and it doesn't affect the uh, main thread performance. Right. No, I I uh, I agree with that. And what I was saying is that just if if all you're doing is having your worker request data and then, then pass it back, you know, without doing additional work on it and other things like that, it's it's not very efficient. Um, it actually, um, I did some tests and it was like um, in Firefox, especially, it was like an order of magnitude slower. Um, and I was doing uh, like large. Um, JSON feature, uh, GeoJSON feature data sets where it had um, um, 50 to 100,000 points. Um, <clears throat> and like for Firefox and uh, Safari specifically, it was uh, orders of magnitude slower to be doing that and the worker than the main thread. If all you were doing was getting the data, uh, doing uh, essentially the browser's doing JSON parse on it and then um, passing it back. But yeah, if you're doing additional work, you're right. That makes a lot of sense, and uh, that's something that I built into the um, mm -hmm. Esri uh, JavaScript API, which I didn't talk about here because it's not really necessarily open source. But um, if you all have questions about that, example, that, I could do that. Right? Mm -hmm. question: <coughs> You're not doing a million points in the browser, man. Just, just mm -hmm. <laughs> great. Let's clap it up for that.